about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. How did Moses find a wife? Read your Bible. It was shepherds that came to drive the women. Remember, the family where Moses' wife came from, they were shepherds. The women would come to feed their cattle and those shepherds would come to drive them and fetch water. And Moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people. It is important. There are shepherds that watch their flock by night. But there are shepherds that kill their flocks. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Please listen to this because tomorrow you'll be the one mentoring a lot of people. Spiritual growth is a school. It's a school with an exact curriculum. That God will help you. The sequential revelation of truth matters. It does. I'm telling you this. There are many things we know about God that are wrong. There are many things we don't know about God that should be known. The dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation. Light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities. I used to think it's faith, but it's not faith. Faith is simply the credit card that you use. But what really pays for it is light. Hmm. It, from the abundance of these things, then you will know who God is. And you can worship him in spirit and in truth. There are things you can know about God that makes you unbendable, immovable. Nobody comes to sway you toe and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive the bible says it's important now before i get to my sermon this is this i can't believe that i'm still not started preaching look at these people please start look at these people which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately there are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have salvation is not part of it they never got born again they were just born in a family just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe so they started like that they started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now from keyboard he became um, assistant music director. Are you seeing that now? From assistant music director, you became music director. From music director, you became deacon. Huh? Yes. From deacon, they open a branch just when you are graduating. And they call you pastor, whoever you are. Now, the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown, according to God's order, there is a pattern. God is a God of patterns. He's not just a God of motion. He's a God of patterns. How you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart. 
Now, this is the interesting thing about God. Even when you think you have been working with God, like we arrogantly say, for 15 years, the day he reveals himself to you, he will rearrange your life back. And sometimes when he, he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire, it's in the Bible. That means you can see a lot of achievements and the fire of his light will come. And all that will be left is your true state. That means God will say, you men say you are in level 5, you're level 15, but really you are just at level 1. Now, you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king, there is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king, there is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So men can call you MOG, men can call you deacon, men can call you this and that. But the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, He never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred. I hope you know at that time, Abraham was not a failure. At least he had some results. He had 200 plus servants. He had cattle. He had a number of things. And said, Abraham, don't think I'm coming to continue from there. I will start with you again. Let's start that journey. This is what brought some of you here. Some of you are already pastors, men of God, leaders. Some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission. You carried youth pastor mentality and just came and God said, no way, come and sit down. And if you are not careful, and please, every pastor here, this is an advice. Don't just see someone come because they said he came from so, so, so ministry or so, so, so parish. And in that parish, he was the music director. And you just say, okay, no problem. Come and sit down and play keyboard. And the guy comes with that celebrity mindset. Because in his church, spiritual growth is not necessary. In his church, just attendance and loyalty is what is, and, and sowing of seeds here and there. But now, this requirement requires you to sit down. Many celebrities get born again. I mean, secular celebrities now. They get born again and come to church and then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it. Not God. You are joking. Not God. Mm -mm. Not God. Not the God of the heavens. When you come, everybody starts from class one. Even Jesus, when he came, the father didn't even pity Jesus to say, okay, you are Jesus. I mean, this is me. He started right from scratch. At age 12, I imagine what was in the mind of Jesus when he was reading himself. Thou shall love the Lord your God. And the rabbis were saying, I hope you are learning it. And he was just watching. The force that holds what he's reading. And not even Jesus was promoted like that. He had to wait. At age 12, he was learning. What do you think you are to just jump the steps? Favor does not jump steps. So, you hear that? Because our idea of shortcut must be balanced. Favor is shortcut, yes. But it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear. Favor is a system that was designed to help you because men do not start life in an ideal way. Please listen. If I was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday, the good old graph of life. 
if you are not part of school of ministry join even if it's just because of that if you don't change after that teaching i don't know what will change you in this life again the graph of life are we together if i get born again 40 years how many of you know that i'm blessed but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time we don't have forever on earth now i got born again 40 years and someone got born again at age three who has more advantage than the other and don't say we are all equal you are not equal this guy has time time at age three born again at age four filled with the holy ghost at age five be mentored by a visionary father when that child becomes 12 he is now you of 70 at age 12 now listen let me show you listen listen don't just laugh let me show you the relevance of things like mercy favor these things are not just random things god looked at the way man works on earth and said if i don't add these other things man will never become the fullness of god's grace so here and there he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you this is where things like favor are important if you don't have favor in life you you will succeed the problem is you will only succeed if your life is ideal nobody's life is ideal including jesus they hid jesus because somebody wanted to kill him until herod died and he said okay now you can go there were things he would have been doing within that time mephibosheth because a midwife I, 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 am i alone in this place this night mephibosheth was a sincere person the midwife that held him was careless and because of her carelessness that guy fell down and broke his leg now sorry would not solve that problem because there are things he will never be able to do so how does god help this man's destiny by allowing him to live life the way it should be no so god introduces things like mercy thou shall arise and have mercy and looks at him god and he knows he looks at the way man should go and looks at the way man goes this guy was called to be a prophet to the nations this is his destiny are we together now according to god's predeterminate counsel the destiny of this gentleman like jeremiah is to be a prophet to the nations but it so happened that the womb that will give birth to him married an unbeliever now listen to this i hope you know this is not his fault it's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled now god married to a non-christian you, you you get what i'm saying now this guy according to the blueprint of his life he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at one but because of what he has to fight an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here and that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first and listen to me sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university so his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get to university? 17 this guy has to wait for 17 years are you getting the point now because according to god's blueprint that is the safest way for him to live if he lives in a way that they, they can kill him and god for the sake of his destiny will not allow him that now while he's waiting for that 17 years his brain is not closed he's learning a lot of things he must undo because you cannot be in my house and not serve my god so while he's bowing down and doing all of these things heaven is bleeding because according to the blueprint by age five this guy should already be seeing visions but now the and satan when he peeps there satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny 
I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow. Please, parents, let me tell you something. And even those who have children now, don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth. It matters. Sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense, wasting his time. At the end of it, you will find out that there is no sequential growth. Please listen. I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustrations. I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you. And the problem is not only an attack. An attack looks like the obvious reason. But I'm telling you now, there is no prophet, no pastor, no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes no you want holistic growth we must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong back to my story this gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from god and far from destiny are we together now he gets to the university after 17 years 17 years has been wasted when he gets there now the devil will try to do all kinds of things for instance the devil can ensure that his first cgpa is 1.2 1. what? who will listen to god under that kind of condition the pressure from life will make him say do you know what let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished now it doesn't mean please i hope you understand that i'm not being sarcastic to any the fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you you call it circumstances but these are intentional orchestrations and then this gentleman one day that's why inviting people to the house of god if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving then it is evil to not invite people this is not the issue of evangelism this this you being an extension of god's mercy because the person you will be inviting you think you are just inviting you don't know you are acting prophecy imagine that this guy now is in zaria in this situation imagine what heaven would do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to koinonia you thought you just invited a man but you literally shifted a destiny literally because of one encounter are you with me this night now it's very important some of you are now seeing now do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes you have invited five six people but all of them don't have the same destiny this guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations did you really invite one person how many people did you invite he will give you flimsy excuse excuses i've not eaten and the holy ghost will say feed him and you are like holy spirit what is all this one i don't have transport and you bring him now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then i'm not ready working for others the moment you enter except your feet that something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents You can choose to believe what I'm saying. No problem. I don't know who prayed for you before you arrived. But let me tell you sincerely. If you know that there was no salvation in your past, please hear what I'm saying seriously. And pay attention to it. Altars are wicked. They are like time. Nothing can fight them. They will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you. hallelujah i heard of a man of god that bought truck this dangote truck 
they kept advising him to diversify and that guy carried all his money i don't know how much that truck is but it's so expensive the moment the person bought that truck I, I, he was coming along i think kogi or so the road that was how that thing just capsized it burnt in a way burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man and the guy sat down and was almost killing himself who taught you what you know spiritually forget about the one koinonia taught you what is it resting upon because some of you this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of god now i don't mean i don't mean i love the body of christ but i have to tell you the truth there are men of god and there are churches that are wonderful but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth no the context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth salt is good but if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook is that a blessing no. there are truths that are like salt they are sprinkled and is enough by the time you carry that truth the same size of rice and combine everything you will deal and kill somebody there are people the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work are we together they came from a highly intellectual family and you see people just laugh and say demons the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind and the devil says wow this is wonderful for the child who comes from the church the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior that is a correct sermon but for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name when they gave birth to you while you were a baby your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you will just casually say in jesus name i'm born again no sir the same way you don't say casually money come and it comes there are systems and there are principles the same way too if you are not careful you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons did you hear what i said everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues in fact the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity it's a blessing to have a good pastor over you it's a blessing to have a man of god that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building i will give you pastors after my heart this is a mistake we're making in ministry now we just ordain people anyhow the moment someone looks handsome charismatic can dress well you just say come you are you are pastor this and that you arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people at the end of it the people don't know what they believe again it's nine o'clock let's pray we can't hear this kind of thing and just round up we are going to pray seriously first and foremost hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit find a neighbor and pray seriously
Shela bakata barus kabaranda kata. Embra kate kaleka to baruka sada balakata fresh. Kraso delende kaparo shada karyanda kada bradegesh. Shala maranda kate prakate leka tos. Embra kata baraka to kate barata. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for any man who intends to be changed, to be lifted, and to become great in life and destiny. Shalabaranda kaprakato sepeles. Pray, pray, pray. Le parakato jambra kata embra kata kata baruto soto preke devela. My Christian experience must be fruitful. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit in my life. Barakato sabrande ke debala, empre ke to kashada barata se ke debala kata brande ke debala, empre ke to shabros ke la kapo shata brande ke de. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. Shekete kaparaka to pariketa, embrata le kaparota shalakata variata. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Shabarakata. Empra kato sheke te leke te ke te ke te ke te. Empra kato soto pakura kata paria. Open up, open up, open up. In the name of Jesus, open up. Open up, lekata barata shote reketaba. Open up, in the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. 
Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life. Rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, oh God. I am open, I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment you are not supposed to be looking for money now you are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply there are people right now at according to god's blueprint the level of prophetic you should be operating in it is required for the kind of assignment but because you are still here god cannot move with you hear me hear me there are ladies according to god's blueprint you should be ready for marriage now based on the sequence of your destiny but it's right now you are getting serious with your life hear me hear me there are some of you according to the sequence of destiny it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars but the devil killed your brother from bed that means you are carrying the burden of two people you need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else. So when you pray one hour, God will say, add it to, because you were supposed to pray only an hour because there's someone else holding it with you. But he's alive and he's drinking around. And God's agenda must move forward. So you must build stamina to be able to carry it. Listen. Listen to me. Please listen. I'm speaking by the spirit. Don't think I'm just talking anyhow. Listen to me. Please listen. There are families according to the design of God. You are supposed to be three men. But the devil made sure no man come to that family. It was later on you showed up sometimes as the last born. And now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man. There are families, it's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor. But now your father did not serve the Lord or your father has died. God will not change his purposes. His plans can change, but his purposes remain eternal. Listen, listen, there are families according to god's design you should never even try to say okay i'm looking for two or three jobs because according to that design your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance but now the devil hijacked that destiny and the way you are right now 
if you fail, there is no more hope for your family. Because everyone that came to help, the devil took them out of the way. You know it. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I will not fail you. And I will not fail destiny. Is someone praying? Lord, I will not fail you. I will not fail destiny. If it depends on me, then I will not fail. If it depends on me, if it depends on me to change the course of my family, if it depends on me to enthrone Jesus over my family, if it depends on me, I will not fail. Someone pray. Pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind. Pray with the picture of your children on your mind. Pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind. If it depends on me, I will not fail. It may take time, but I will not fail. Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen, the next prayer point, we are praying. Listen, Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time but you see there's something about destiny there are people when the devil wants to waste their time they will get american visa and travel and roam around america just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny look at how god brought some of you here god carried you from different places it's destiny Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions 
you will think his promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not i pray by the spirit in this season take me there take me there i should not be at this level in ministry financially maritally spiritually pray by your spirit bring acceleration to my life there is no more time to waste the voice of my generation is crying speedy manifestation oh god of all that pertains to my destiny in this season hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me the next prayer point i will have to teach you a little to understand covenants are systems of advantage please listen a covenant is more than an agreement it's a system that provides an advantage in life listen to me carefully you reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have are we together now yes advantage every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the bible you must study it everybody rose based on an advantage joshua stood before jericho helpless like any leader would be except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that god's people would be in captivity for 400 years please listen to me this thing i'm teaching you is a deep teaching your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage i repeat the knowledge of god is not based on covenant your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage. Are we together? And there are many systems of advantage. I hope that in the coming weeks, just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks. Because there are things that we need to learn. There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. She looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, Am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, You come to me with your spheres and your bows, but I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah, 
I wish we could deal with this. Because you see, a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God. God's dimensions are stored in his names. I came with a name. Are we together now? And foolish Goliath, instead of him to ask, are you a Jew? He kept quiet. What do you think made Jericho to close their gate? They said, who are the guys coming to attack us? The moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. And based on those systems of advantage, I tell you, they can fail in other things, not finances. No. They can make the most stupid financial decisions. Yet what they stand upon will bail them out. Have you seen families like that? All their children must be leaders. Must be leaders. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether it's a village school or whatever. The girl must be head girl. The boy must be head boy. In a class of many people. Eventually they will be leaders. When you say. The J.F. Kennedy family. What comes to your mind? There are families that are a dynasty. It's not just business they were passing. They were platforms. Whether with fraternity with Satan or fraternity with God. But there was a system of advantage. I will never forget. I've always been a very brilliant person. I remember I was in Jens 1. This issue changed my life. I had always been the best student, effortlessly the best. In fact, I didn't know that people used to read during exams. Nobody ever asked me to go and read. If you were in my class, just give up in terms of position. You are wasting your time. It's not only that I will take first. The gap I will give you will make you not to come near me again. And something happened. When I was in secondary school, the first time I was the best student. The second term, I think I was the best student or so. But the third term, the guy that took third before, the parents moved to living faith. Listen, oh. They moved to living faith. It didn't reach three months. They did anointing service for that boy. Straight when he came and wrote exams. When that, now this is not about first or second. I'm just using it to explain something. When the results came out and I looked at my result, I looked at the guy. It, it wasn't, you know, I didn't know what I knew now. You can imagine a small boy. I said, no, something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. Because my best performance was this point. Something has to be wrong. That guy was, his average was just with like five marks. I said, no, there has to be a recalculation. Something is wrong. And then I met him. I said, in the spirit of sportsmanship, congratulations. And he laughed. He told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith. I said, what is living faith? It was later when I understood. I said, ah! I was standing on my brain. He was standing on an altar. Listen, sir, let me do this. Come. Tell us your testimony. Now, everybody stand and listen to this testimony. Go ahead. Um, I am a pastor. I was in Mubi before we got transferred to Abuja. Because of the distance and the financial constraint, we decided that my wife would not return back to school. So during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam, she didn't go and then... Uh, we attended Koinonia, uh, the miracle service uh, last month, and then we the resolved that she should go back to school. When she returned to school, they uploaded their results. Lo and behold, she had results. And all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. Oh. What, what second semester? Semester. Because of, listen, because of financial constraint, which is justifiable. 
they now came down he relocated and then when all of that happened he now planned because he had been had been in touch so it's not something that we're just talking i've been in touch this is not a license for laziness no it's just showing you that there are possibilities that's why i said the prayer i want you to pray now if i don't teach this you will not understand it woe betides a man who stands alone listen bishop oyedeko listen one man of god in the south south he was about to start ministry and then he went to bishop oyedeko for prayer and advice as you know they were releasing him and bishop oyedeko spoke to him in yoruba i wish i'm a yoruba person he said never fight alone that's my advice for you never fight alone I show you why many people continue to fall victims in life so the plan was that they will go back and then let the wife now register now that God has helped them things have started changing I'm explaining the story for you they now went and said okay let's see how far as they printed results second semester result a and B parallel that's what came out as the wife's result this man is a pastor he has a congregation he's a spiritual father to many he will not come and mess up his integrity and he's, this is a father with a wife and children listen it is not to endorse laziness but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities limited only by your spiritual understanding god bless you son We are going to round up but let's we are going to pray this prayer systems of advantage abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called or of the chaldeans chaldeans were were idol worshipers they were necromancers when god called him out it still was not enough God met him and said, I need to enter a covenant with you. If I just call you and I say, let's go to the promised land, you will still die. I have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order. Are we together? many of you do not know that the secret to the future you've heard me say it is in the past before you move forward in life you have to go backwards please hear what i'm saying all these names that we have given this phenomena in life there whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough whether you call it spirit husband whether you call it spirit wife whether you call it rise and fall all those are invented names that's to tell you many people are having the same experience that's why they could receive it and understand the teaching that i did the mystery of deliverance part one to four that message has delivered people until we stand before god to see how many people were delivered When truths are taught with imbalance, it can destroy. Listen, there are things that God does for the sake of the fathers. There are things that God does for your own sake. Did you hear what I said? There are some of you now, you are in certain levels of blessings and favor and in the name of honesty you have nothing to do with it maybe your mother used to cook for pastors listen no before you were born your mother just said me you am not a woman of god but all i keep doing is if there is any pastor i will make sure i cook for them one day she cooked for a man who was not a pastor she cooked for a system 
and he swore a blessing and said may your children be great now listen that looks like a pronouncement it's more than a pronouncement and now you showed up and when satan is supposed to destroy you between you and the destruction the pronouncement comes in between you my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth the same way noah looked at africa and cursed africa and said a servant of servant shall you be as born again as we are that curse is still in place today now people are following from america and the rest and i don't mean to insult you but you will see the level of spiritual depravity that is in america the decadence right that when you put sex on phone male of or on a form male or female it's not only male or female that is there now male female and then some others yet in the midst of it you expect god to be angry and stand up and say america your glory has been withdrawn <laughs> every time he wants to do that someone's prayer stands every time the coming of jesus was about to be delayed the prayer of anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit maranatha come 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 i told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with god she told the lord she said lord my own father was a pastor he died serving you he said please use either my brother her younger brother now or any of my sons to continue let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost she thought it was just a casual prayer and then i showed up innocently but something was a system of advantage there are some of you today you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds it's a grace god gave that territory a grace now what i'm teaching you is truth from god's word that the yoruba people as a nation were given many graces among them was the grace for the prophetic the eyes that see not necessarily hearing but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity it's a grace that was given that you can drop an Igbo territorially is a grace any poor Igbo man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage listen the north and that includes the middle belt the grace is the grace of leadership and governance it's a grace this is what the northerners take advantage of they study these things they don't just come out for election they know that we are standing on an advantage these are ordinances my brothers and my sisters in mount zion the side of the north the city of the great king are we together now leadership so many times when god wants you to be a spiritual leader listen carefully no matter where you are in your voyage you must touch the knot no matter who you are listen carefully this is where bishop oedeko started from 
this no matter who he will rout you because you must drink of that grace How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say evil people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today. It is those who have the eyes that see, that know. Hmm. Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of Koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it. There is a heritage that we have. A territorial heritage. An intellectual heritage. A spiritual heritage. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching... That you hear tonight and say wow wonderful <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with there are many things i have said that you did not hear but i guarantee you that if you understand what i taught this night 
there is no limit to your life you can take advantage of everything around you every territory has an advantage you can tap into the advantage that comes with it your church has an advantage your soil has an advantage your family has an advantage i know your father was a herbalist and a priest but that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet there is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated hallelujah this is how we grow in the kingdom we don't just grow by will we don't just grow by luck listen let me tell you this this night I just chose to show you these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people it's not just that things are working anyhow no you see all this anointing the power of God breaking out anyhow it's not there are systems of advantage your life must learn it you must know it and you must know how to engage it every Jew in Israel knows he cannot fail born again or not meet any Jew put any Jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening no matter how foolish the decisions are the wealthiest people in America today are Jews the greatest brands in the world today they are Jews there is a history to the things we see there is a reason why Boko Haram thrives in the north they go outside the north they will fail north is the seat of governance there is an advantage in the territory they know this by divination The East is always a place associated with wisdom. The Magi, wise men came from the East. It's true. The wickedness came from the seat of governance. Herod wanting to kill Jesus. So it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the North. The seat of governance and strangely enough the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival arises hmm. that is the reason why you see the moves of God ministries like koinonia all these things are not they are not guessings they are pieces of a divine puzzle <laughs> are we together many of you are looking at me dumbfounded let's round up by one last prayer father in the name of your son jesus christ reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life from scripture from the ministry that I am under the grace from Christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what I stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant please pray
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why the Holy Spirit decided to move this way? To share this? These are not things I share in a general meeting like this. These are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders. I don't know why God decided to allow this thing. That's why I say, please get it and listen to it. You will think you understood what I said. No. Your spirit man only appreciated what I said. You will need to settle down. Because you will hear something from that message that will control your results and open you up to the next season. This is how I live my life. I never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage. This world is too wicked. You don't guess your advantage on the battlefront. It's too risky. Tomorrow I'm on my way to Lagos again. I came back from Kogi State yesterday. There is an advantage I stand upon that gives me security over death. My life is a very risky life. If you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule and all you say is I know God will protect us one day you will land in trouble I am a giver as a person is both an office a hobby a desire and a responsibility and I know that the way I give is not recommended for an average person I'm telling you this you give that way you will have problems with your wife your husband your children that means there must be an advantage this is more than financial intelligence there must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered my work schedule if you do what I do for two weeks you will have a health challenge sincerely i'm telling you this i've been out of this town since saturday only returned yesterday had to rush come for school of ministry and all today i've been busy doing a lot of things i'm here now this night as soon as i'm done i'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two three hours heading back home barely have time to sleep tomorrow i'm heading to lagos straight into the morning session of a meeting and yet tuesday is my birthday you live like that something will happen to you if i've not collapsed it's not just because i'm wise there is something you must stand on there must have been something god told you or god told someone you are under or god connected you to there has to be something there are ministries who don't understand this they are anointed but they pay every bill by themselves they never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage there are some of you you have never been helped by anybody you have not lacked but you don't know what it means to be assisted our lives are full of systems of advantage there was something on Jesus that made Simon of Cyrene to be close by. There was something in Jesus that made Joseph of Arimathea to be willing to bury him in the virgin tomb. Look at me, please. I'm rounding up. I know I'm taking your time. We're rounding up now. Any earthly advantage in your life that seems to have gone, there is a spiritual replacement for it. Listen, let me comfort you that means whatever your father should be please i'm not getting too emotional if your father here if you've lost your father or you've lost your mother or you've lost any sibling or you've lost a destiny helper i'm bringing you a word of hope that every physical thing that they should do there is a remedy in the spirit if it does not happen to you it is because you do not know this dimension of God. That means you are saying, I'm an orphan apostle and the only child. No father, no mother. There is something you can tap into the realm of the spirit that can be almost equal, aside from the bodily connection, 
of a father a mother are we together now there are some of you who lost your physical parents and God carried you and came and planted you in koinonia here so that you can have the opportunity of receiving what is as real as I as fatherhood that means it is your responsibility to go back to God and say Lord because of my faith I left my loved ones now I am in Zaria all by myself I don't have an earthly father I don't have an earthly mother or I have a father mother some of you here please don't feel bad I am rounding up but I'm speaking by the spirit some of you here are single moms you have your children something happened maybe your husband died or ran away whatever the story is it doesn't matter and humanly speaking you are supposed to be disadvantaged but the Bible says for we know they don't know but we know that the kingdom can construct an advantage for you there are systems of advantage apostle I graduated with a third class or I never even had the opportunity to go to school in the first place and the truth is at my age knowledge is not a waste but sincerely at my age the responsibilities around my life may not allow me the privilege of a young person going to go to school again there is a system of advantage that you can tap into that will lift you and keep you where your contemporaries are as though you did not have any disadvantage this is the excellency of working with god so this is a word of hope don't sit down feeling bad just because your husband died or your wife died or your mother died most times we cry for two reasons number one because of the earthly connection oh how he loved him that's what they said when jesus wept at the grave of lazarus but the second reason is because of the space and the vacuum that their absence creates and i'm speaking to you as a man of god by the spirit that there is an advantage in the kingdom that you can tap into you can outsource an advantage to correct the anomaly that the absence of these personalities have caused in your life let's pray father i have spoken to your people by the spirit you have moved in a dimension tonight with us that is most edifying especially for this season we honor you for your wisdom and how you walk in the midst of us we honor you for your speakings thank you for the impartations the deliverances the healings and everything you have done and are still doing my God I pray let this voice not be the voice of a man let let it be the voice of God let it be the voice of prophecy let it be the voice of destiny in the name of Jesus I have spoken your counsel according to the wisdom of your spirit I ask that as your people listen to these teachings again and again may they hear what they've not heard now may they see what they've not seen personalize this teaching oh god when they are listening to the tapes and let it minister deeply to the fabric of their destiny let there be results from this teaching tonight and lord i decree and declare that you bless your people the book of revelation says blessed are ye for you hear these things it says blessed is he that hears and reads these things i pray that the ears that will hear this from now and even many many years and decades from now may those ears be blessed may those eyes be blessed in the name of jesus lord i thank you because in the days that come we will credit our the excellency of our work to some of these truths we have learned tonight we give you the praise we honor you and we thank you continue to make this place a place of revelation a place of balance a place of the spirit we give you praise we give you honor for in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray amen, amen and amen let me make the altar call right now thank you thank you very much thank you.
you are here and sincerely please listen no let's honor the people that need to come out here you are here and you are yet to make jesus lord of your life i don't need to cajole you i don't need to coerce you this night please those outside minimize moving so that people can concentrate and listen while i was preaching the holy ghost was speaking to you that this man of god is talking about you about your destiny about your family and you know by the spirit and by the conviction of the holy spirit that you are here and you are yet to make jesus lord of your life that's category one the second category you may be here outside inside online and you're saying apostle i want to rededicate my life not after what i've heard this night i don't want to go back the same way i came if you are in any of these categories inside and outside our time is gone please very very quickly i like you to boldly stand up on your feet and come and stand here don't wait for anyone to come first don't be ashamed don't be afraid koinonia encourage them they are coming by the spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three the extension to the road and those online very quickly please keep clapping they are coming jesus is calling don't allow this moment pass you by coming out is not compulsory but it is necessary for your destiny young and old make your way come quickly keep clapping motivate them as they come if you're coming from outside please hurry up please hurry up <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord while those who are coming god bless you while they keep coming um, look at me please you, you'll be praying in a moment but I salute every single one of you and I appreciate you for the boldness it takes a lot of courage psychologically speaking to respond to a, an altar call like this and I want to appreciate you for not frustrating the grace of God by coming out to make this commitment some of you are making this decision for the first time some of you are rededicating your lives truthfully if you're outside and you're still coming please come quickly come quickly god bless you don't let anyone condemn you don't let the devil tell you you are so bad god cannot receive you that's the devil speaking his language is love his language is light he ministers hope hallelujah praise the lord so i salute every one of you you're making these decisions like i thought some of you are standing here but you are not the one standing a generation is standing prophetically in and through you I want you to lift your right hand and repeat after me not as though reciting a poem let it be from the depth of your heart god bless you sir come jesus is in this place and i want you to say this convincingly i want you to say this truthfully say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word and I have come to you to receive help, to receive grace, to receive your life. Therefore, I declare that from today and forever, Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I declare that from today, I move forward ever and backwards never. I am a child of God. I am saved. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you. As always, we will continue to thank you for the ones that you bring to be saved through this platform. It's our joy to continue to see souls saved truly. And we thank you for drawing these ones. No man can draw them except you call them. You have called them for the sake of your love for them, for the sake of their destinies. I pray 
that in the name that is above all names the grace that is required to live victoriously in this kingdom may you receive that grace right now in the name of jesus every guilt every shame every hurt every pain every disappointment every discouragement every hopelessness i declare that it it blows away like smoke before the wind i declare that you start on a fresh page tonight in the name of jesus i bless you with the blessings of heaven and i declare that from today you will walk in victory in jesus name i pray amen and amen and amen thank you very much there's a lady waving her hand smiling at you i want all of you in concert just follow this lady and you will be led to a group of people who welcome you and just share a few things and then you'll be back to your seats koinonia are you appreciating them hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.